Hey, Donnie Walker here. Saturday afternoon. Beautiful day here today after all the rainstorms and windstorms last night. I think there was around a quarter million people out of power yesterday or last night. The main line got hit hard, a lot of the Gulf Islands and some areas around here in Nanaimo. We don't get tornadoes here or twisters or anything really, but we can get some pretty good pretty good winds and, and uh, heavy rain. Eh? It can do a lot of destruction of... Uh, Especially right now with the, um, being that it was so dry for so long, we were pretty much in fire season, like just not even like a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago or something, man. Guys were still shut down. It was so dry. You weren't allowed to have open fires and stuff. Then, then the rain started coming. So it just went like from one extreme to the other. Typical lately, man. It'd be nice if it was actually can be like around 20 to 25 degrees, maybe around there for like a few weeks. So you can actually get some stuff done, like do some burning and, and whatnot, and maybe some firewood and whatnot. But it just seems like it's right from the extreme heat right to rain again. Then it's too muddy and unsettling. So what's happened a lot, a lot is, um, you know, it was so dry, then the rain comes and it doesn't really get into the ground very good. And also a lot of trees get toppled over, especially when the wind comes. So there was a lot of trees down uh, last night as well. Branches wrecking people's sheds, roofs and cars and stuff. But hey, natural, disaster, natural disasters are great for business. Hey, eh? All the tree guys are busy and people cleaning up stuff. So yeah, so it's pretty cool. I, got, I I had my daughter over last night for supper. I um, made some pork schnitzel and some some uh, mashed potatoes and some beets. Great dinner I made her. Um, we had a nice little hangout and talk talking. And then I convinced her to come by in the morning and, and I wanted to go fishing up at Fourth Lake up my little private fishing hole, I call it. Hey, Wilson? <laughs> Anyways, I... Uh, I have three trout rods here in my home and I can only find one spinner hook. Like my fishing vest is in my camper up at the old racetrack where I go camping. You guys have seen that before. So darn it, man, I only had one spinner. So, uh, so I took only one rod with me, obviously. And on the way up, I said to Taylor, I said, I guaranteed you, I guarantee you, I'll bet you I can uh, catch a fish first cast. In this spot and she's like yeah 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 whatever no no i won't get that so uh, i said okay i tell you what you, you, i want you to film me doing it so we can do a video and then uh what i forget what we bet about oh i bet about that for to make her to film me that was kind of weird anyway she filmed me and then she fished just after i did and she caught a, a couple little ones and she Got the hook snagged on a rock, and uh, we lost our only one spinner hook. It's no big deal. I caught a couple little ones. She caught she caught a little one. They weren't any size to keep. Uh, normally, I get a get a good lunker in there, man. Lunker, I mean, like a nice big trout. Uh, last Father's Day, I think it was, I got Bobby Walker, my dad, a nice trout in there. He couldn't believe it. I come walking out of the forest with this big trout eh, from the middle of nowhere. He's like, where'd you get that? And I was like, right over there. Oh my God. It's a great little spot, man. Uh, it's so beautiful. Like it, there's a little waterfall there. The water trickles in from the dam from Fourth Lake, which I explained how that works there with the pulp, the um, pulp mill. How to get the water from there down to there. So uh, yeah, that was a great time this morning. Hope you guys seen that video. Uh, so I'm here today in the uh, shed doing a video with for a uh, John Thread 80cc. What I have here is a Model 80. A fella that uh, watches my channel from Parksville. I'm, I'm, I'm modifying a 365 for him right now. And also he's going to buy a new 261 that I'm going to do the exhaust only on uh, with a 20 inch 325 bar and chain. They're a nice little ripper saw. Great little saws. Anyways, his grandfather bought this John Thread brand new. I don't know if he bought it in this town, he bought it in Europe, or whatever. But John Thread's made some great saws. You got John Thread, Partner, and Husqvarna are the three companies that built saws in Sweden. 
Kind of weird how three different companies were in the same country, eh? But uh, Husqvarna ended up buying both of them up. But they all made great products. John Thread made the first fuel-injected saw back in the 50s. Can you believe that? Way before still. Uh, they also had a diesel one, which I've seen in person. I sure like to see it running, though. A friend of mine in Manitoba. I guess I shouldn't call him a friend. I like the guy. I just don't know his name. Weird. He came here and I gave him some old saws and sold him a couple. And he showed me that diesel one. He used propane and the ha handlebar to ignite the diesel to, to get it running. Eh? So, hey, friend, if you're ever watching my channel and you still have that, I'd really like to see a video of it running or, or come and see you. Maybe Tin Man can come your way and check it out. He lives in uh, Manitoba too. Starbucks, Manitoba, eh? That's where my coffee's from, buddy. Thank you. So, um, yeah, three three companies there, yeah. So this this Model 80 was made, manufactured by John Shred's Fab, Fabrickers AB. Partil, Sweden was the, is the um, city over there. I get all this information off the Chainsaw Collector's Corner, by the way. You go to Chainsaws, you can download every, any information on almost every saw. I told you that before the other day. Anyway, so let's go here. Year introduced, 1970 to 1980. Ten years it was uh, built. ADC cities, one cylinder, 52 millimeter bore, 38 millimeter stroke. Piston port, 3.53 kilowatts at 8,000 RPM. Now, kilowatts can be changed into horsepower by, by doing a fraction uh, uh, multiple thing. One point something or something. I got it written down at my other shop where my dyno is, and I'll, I'll let you know about that later. 7.16 pounds, the power head was. One man saw. Uh, mostly magnesium. Uh, magneto type. Uh, Pagani. Pagani. Never heard of that before. Pagani magneto type. Until it's an HS 101B series carburetor, an RK23 HS carb kit will, will uh, rebuild it completely, or a, a diaphragm kit is a DJ DG 5HS slash T. Uh, automatic oiler, 2.7 millimeters for top dead center for ignition timing. Point gap, wow, no, it has points. Okay, cool. 0.30 to 0.40 millimeters of point setting. Oh, I wonder what that is in in standard. I'm sure I got some feeler gauges here. Thought I did. Thought I had a set right here. Here I do. Yeah, I do. <coughs> I'm thinking it's like 16 to <coughs> 18 thou maybe. Eh? What does it say? 0.3 to 0.40. No. <coughs> so 0.381. <coughs> which is almost 0 0.40 is 15 thou okay see pretty close eh um let's go 0 0.3 here completing i mean yeah yeah point point four oh millimeters okay let's see if we can find that um, no i don't have it on here but basically yeah yeah so we're around yeah, 15 thou, 15, 16 thou around there. <coughs> Pretty standard, okay? Two cycles, chainsaw mix, uh, 38404, 25 to one, they say they're running it, which a lot of people, a lot of them did. Remember those other old saws I told you, those guys are running like 12 to one, 15 to one. Oh my goodness, that's quite the smoke, eh? And I'll keep all the mosquitoes away for sure. If, especially if you're out camping, fire up your old saw and boom, all the mosquitoes are gone. It's like a fogging system. So anyways, let me show you this saw. So the, my buddy's grandfather bought this brand new. They've only really milled like two trees with it. So this thing really hasn't been used much, but it's been sitting. So it's going to probably have a rotten carburetor and a rotten gas. Here it is. I haven't even blown it off or anything. Side cover, Model 80, John Surrett 80, okay, a little bucking spike on it, pretty hollow muffler, I think, 
John Sereds. John Sereds. Fab Rickers. AB John Sereds Sweden. Totally cool, man. This thing is like such new condition. It's amazing. So let's uh, kind of look into it a little bit here. I'm put this sheet up that I got here. Here's the uh, all the write up about it. Tells you everything about it. Maximum engine RPM ten thousand seven hundred. Uh, might have a, one of those governor carburetors on it. Let's check it out. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do this one for our ADCC class stuff. The guys have been sending me a few messages. Um. What do we got for for stills and around eighty C C C range? You think, man? I'm trying to think here. You know, I, we've done a lot of stills through the years and whatnot. Look at that, eh? Nice old flock filter. Got a lot of fines on it from from Millen, eh? Nothing down the throat though. Looks pretty good down in there. Okay, how do you take this top cover off? Let's have a look here. Flat blade screwdriver. Looks like three screws um yeah so a dollar too I, I need a dollar what do you think about a dollar range um we used to have some around here years ago 143s i think 153s a friend of mine uh don iso uh faller from the nama lakes uh his dad used to have a dealership of dollars in duncan so there's got to be some around, eh? I gotta find a a dollar about eighty cc's to um, doesn't matter what year it is to try to, to kind of put it in this lineup of all these saws. I want to try to have one of every manufacturer that's made an eighty cc saw range. I just told you that before, and yeah, I'm telling you again. So yeah, hit top cover. Three, three, three screws, five millimeter. They got little washers under them. Uh, take that off. Okay, let's get this plug cap off. Oh, that's just a cover for the plug plug cap. That's cool. That's a good idea. Do you remember 0, 075 still? No, 056 stills and 045s. They had the spark plug right up top here like that. And when I worked in the Sabellas, when I first got there to, to do, do the saws for the cow the guys were always complaining they're getting electrocuted from this spark plug lead sitting here hey eh? get a little hole in it and they get it up against their belly when they're falling and it starts zapping them eh so yeah I, I would make a leather cover and and rivet it over their cover for them hey eh? to help them out with that you're welcome by the way guys <laughs> that's a long time ago it was like in 1990 30 years ago okay so Let's get this top cover off. Here's the spark plug lead. Wow. Oh, it's got a coil up top like some of the old John's is. There's a switch wire. Take that off. And our ignition wire. So what these have is a coil up in the top cover. Kind of weird John's had made them this way. So we have, a, we have this black wire here that comes from our points, obviously. And our switch wire that comes from our from our points in our condenser right so the black wire obviously is is power to this coil and then once the points and condenser optimize it it gives it gives you the spark eh so that yeah that's pretty neat eh that's a neat old switch it's got two wires uh sorry the switch switch wire goes on to here and comes from the coil to ground out the coil once once you once you shut it off so they're using two wire system. Okay, you got a basic a Tillotson HS carburetor. Um, doesn't have the governor on it. I don't have my flashlight out here today. It does too. Oh no, it doesn't. It doesn't have that that on it. So maybe it's got some sort of rev limiter. Wow, this thing looks like brand new. Sure, there's some sawdust on it here, but my goodness, it's in such good shape. Okay, so what should we really do with this thing? Should
should we uh, just run it up and run it stock? Or should I, uh, I should go through the fuel system because he did say it had a bit of, it wasn't running quite right. So, oh, big hard old fuel line there. So the fuel line is pretty basic. You got a vent, the vent here, which runs over to the side over here where it's clean. And then the pickup part. Kind of neat. John's Red made neat stuff. Oh, it's got compression. I bet you it's got like a two thick ring piston in it. Let's have a look, eh? Let's have a look. Then I'm going to uh, rip the uh, carburetor off in the fuel system and, 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 and check it out. Okay. And I can just, just the one line I maybe need to replace, but I'll check the one in the tank, make sure it's not rotten, eh? Amen. I use little fold-over tabs like they used to use in the old 2100 to, uh, so the bolt doesn't uh, spin out on you. Okay, that's 8 millimeter or 5 sixteenths. I should have that set up here. Actually, I brought home... A few tools. Where are they? Yeah, look at that. I got an eight eight millimeter T wrench here. Yeah. Still. Two bolts, I think. Looks like two bolts. Only two bolts? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I bet you this thing looks looks like brand new inside. Like I say, the guys only milled like one tree with it. Maybe two, I think. All right, look at that. Got a bit of baffling in there, but it's pretty much a straight shot out the side here. Here's the um, muffler hole. Yeah, there's no baffle in there. So it's just got like a cage here where the exhaust comes through all these holes and then out this side here. So it's a pretty open muffler. Let's look at the piston. Oh, yeah. It's like brand new. Oh, compression. Wow, it's so clean. Not a bit of bit of carbon in it. Too thick ring. See that? Two thick rings. That's why it's got compression. Yeah, this, this will be a nice saw. Like, I just, I really like it. It's really cool looking. Nice side cover, inside adjuster. Nice bucking spike. Really nice bucking spike. And it all looks well built, man. For this year, that's amazing. From 1970 to 1980. Yeah, beautiful saw. So anyways, there we go. There's our John Serrat ADCC one for the uh, 70 to 80 years. You know, 1970 to 1980. So, um... Like I say, I'm still looking maybe for a Dalmar. And what model still you think I should look for? I got um, a few customer saws at the shop. An 08S, an 070, uh, 090. Uh, we know those are big, big, big bore units, so, eh? So, kind of in ADCC range. What the heck did it still have, really, eh? Uh, I got to do some digging on that. You know, I wasn't, we weren't a still dealer for years, eh? But we obviously worked on stills and modified stills for, for the loggers, eh? And they're mainly, you know, the 056, the 084, um, you know, then the 460, 044, 044, 046, 460s, 461, 462, you know, you know what I mean. 066, originally 064. Then 066, then 660. Yeah, the best saw I ever built. 066. Guaranteed, man. You know, the only problem they had was vibration. And the guys that had bad hands had to run the Huskies. Or still do. Um, until now, that still has, she has some spring mounts to them. And, and, and changed maybe their crankshaft balancing a little bit. They're definitely a lot smoother than they used to be. Uh, nice to run now. You can't beat them. Best in the world. Uh, Husky and still. You know. 
I never actually mentioned too much about Dalmors, you know, Makita Dalmar. You know, they make a fabulous saw too, like the 7900 Dalmar. They make some great models too, eh? But we, we used a few in the bush here uh, a bunch of years ago of the 70cc to 80cc range of those. And I had throttle problems, oiler problems, little little things were happening, eh? And it was too bad because the motors on them are, are, are fantastic. Great, great engineering of the motors. Uh, tons of power, but just little things were going on. So I was like, ah, back to the Husky and the stills, right? So anyways, I just thought I'd talk about that. So yeah, this, this will be a nice uh, one for the 1970 to 80 year range. And I just talked to a friend of mine, Keith, Keith earlier from uh, down in Caldwell Hill. Him and his friend Bill, which I used to call the president of the Chainsaw Collectors Club on the island here. I'm going to go down and see these guys. They got a whole bunch of old saws. And Bill there's got a lot too. And apparently he's not working right now. Um for some health issues. I'm sorry to hear that, Bill, but I'm gonna come by, I'd like to come by and see you, buddy, and uh, check out what you got, and maybe even have you part of my um, saw run when we run all these ADCC ones. So, you know, maybe you got something you wanna donate, or me to get running, or just to help you out, and you can come and run them yourself. Nothing wrong with that. We're gonna have like a, uh, like I said the other day, <laughs> Like a bucking fest, but it'll be more like a Donnie fest or Donnie and bucking. Duncan, Duncan fest. <laughs> I don't know. Funny. So anyways, hey, keep your saw in the wind, stick in the ice, rubber in the road. Check out the walkersawshop.com online store. And we got some of the new um, uh, laser... Oh, what are they? What's the guy call them now? Darn it! Darn it! The laser things for cutting the firewood. Laser. Oh. Typical, eh? You, you know it, eh? But you just can't think about it at the time you're thinking about it. Anyways, he's got a new new one that you, you clamp it on the handlebar and it's got a swivel now, so you don't have to loosen the clamp every time and move it. So you can just one set screw and you can move it to set your your setting to your 14, 16, 18 inch type of firewood you want to cut. So yeah, check that out. Meanwhile, have a great weekend. My gal Shelly and her daughter and mom are down in Seattle. And they went to uh, this market today, I think, called Pipe Place or whatever. And I'm thinking, oh man, that's where the Starbucks coffee first place was, eh? Starbucks coffee started in Seattle. They also have a fish store that has the best clam chowder in the world, apparently. I like clam chowder. Um... Anyways, rambling again, eh? So anyways, have a great weekend. It's Saturday. Get out, enjoy your the woods, the sea, the lake, whatever you want to do. Do what I did this morning. Go for an adventure. It was so fun doing that today, tonight, this morning with my daughter, Taylor. Love her to death. Yeah, I'm very proud of her. She's got a great job. She's got the little Jeep there she took me in, and me and Foz, and... Uh, had a great time. So thank you very much, honey. So, y'all have a good day out there. Keep your son of it. Love y'all. Bye.